Hi there everybody, it's UK independent stamping up demonstrator Halsey here from slimstylish.com. Thank you for joining me today. I have a new set. This one is from the annual catalogue and as soon as I saw it I wanted it and I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. I wanted to create a shaker card under the sea. So there's my shaker card and I'm going to show you today how I made it and put it all together. But just this set. I'm not honestly sure whether it's the fact that it's an under the sea sort of theme or whether it's because it's got all of these shaded bits. It's like a sort of a double line on everything that I thought my blends will really enjoy that. So instead of sponging this like I have done with my previous shaker cards, I've actually blended all of the background and the front. I'm going to show you how to make it quite quickly or hopefully quite quickly. It took me ages to put it together. So what I've done is I've already run this through the Big Shot. This is the stitched rectangles. I've put one in front of the other and I've run it through so you can see how I've done it. I'm not going to need the middle rectangle. So that can come out to be used on another card maybe. But this rectangle here is going to be the frame. So I wonder if I've got my piercing tool. I think I need my piercing tool. have. Do you ever find that these get really really stuck in the grooves especially when you're using thick whisper white which I was because I want it to look you know good on the on the finished piece. So I just balance these together using the magnetic plate on my big shop but you can do it whichever way you like. You could do the one and then do the other one. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop that underneath my grid paper. For those watching, please remember I've put it under my grid paper because in about 15 minutes you're going to have a panic with me forgetting where I put the frame. So now I'm just going to use this frame. This is the smallest of the two. And I'm going to have my card base. So this is 9.5 centimetres by 14. Uh, no, it's not. I'm just checking it was the same as what I've done there. It's nine and a half centimetres by 13.75 centimetres. And a pencil, which I didn't pick up to bring over. Ooh, there we go. And I'm just going to draw around this so I know where my box is roughly going to go. I'm going to want them more at the top than at the bottom. And it's only a rough line. So I've just got an idea. Um, my post-it notes are out. So with my post-it notes, I'm going to just grab this and put it quite straight on my grid paper so I know that I'm getting everything straight. And apologies if my head gets in the way here. But I want to get it right. I'm going to go for the top first. I'm going to try and mask along where... I have just drawn without moving my paper. Easier said than done. There we go. Roughly. <laughs> the frame will cover it if you just out a little bit. And so that's about a millimetre or two off on that side, so I want about, about a millimetre or two off on that side, okay. Like I said, if it's not perfectly straight, the frame will mask most of it, so. This is just so I know where I'm colouring and where I'm not, because I have actually only just coloured the background here and the outside is still white. Now this is a thin whisper white because I find colouring on the thin whisper white a lot easier than colouring in the thick whisper white. With my blends it just seems to bleed if you do the thick one. So I'm using this one which is the wreath bit. I'm just going to ink that up with my memento. I find memento is best for blends, it means that they don't run or the ink doesn't run with them, whichever way the run wants to be. And there. I'm 
just going to build it up so it's a little bit higher on this side because that's where my creatures are not going to be. And then I'm just going to decorate the bottom a little bit. Not that you see it all that well, but just so I know it's there. Now for the background colours, I'll pop that there for, for a guide. I've used six blends to create this background. So I've used the light and dark mossy meadow, the light and dark balmy blue, and the light and dark night of navy. I started out with the greens first. I don't know why I pulled the blue. I know I started out with the greens. So I've just used my bullet tip to get all of the dots in the mossy meadow. The best thing about this stamp set is if you're going to blend it, it tells you where to blend. It has got all these gorgeous little dots on the reef. It's also got double lines on all of the little creatures. So you know where to put your dark and where to put your light and where they blend in together, which is really clever. There's no point you looking for where the shades will be when Stampin' Up! have already pointed it out to us. So that's all I'm doing with the dark. I, oh, I panicked and thought I'd use the light then. <laughs> and now I'm coming in with the light. I'm going to stick with the bullet tip because they are quite thin on the wreath. I'm not being too fussy with this because you'll see in a bit but I do go over the green with the lighter blue because um, it's under the sea you know so I want it to have a little bit of the blue shade on it so if I'm not into the corners or anything the blue will pick it up but it's not a problem oh it's been a miserable day here I didn't think I'd be able to film it's been really grey dark and overcast um, and even though I do have a lot of lights at my desk to be able to try and get the light right for you I rely on the light from the window as well I prefer daylight light to crafting um, and there just hasn't been any light and I've pulled back the curtains as far as I can but it's still not really very light in here and uh, I kept looking out thinking it's not going to let me film but I've got the whole day off work to put some videos together for you and I thought well, I'm just gonna have to go for it so it's a bit miserable but it's not raining we've had a lot of rain here in the UK recently a lot of rain we were pretty flooded on the way home the other night it was a scary drive home so I'm starting off with the dark night of navy first and I'm probably going to go to about midway if you can see I've blended it in quite well but if you can see I've actually got lines of where the darkness rises out so you can see this is the dark the light and so on up so I'm probably going to do the dark to about here so I'm doing the dark more as a shadow really Now, if your blends catch your oh, post-it note, that's the word, it will run and it will then seep through because the post-it notes are quite thin. So you want to look out for that and try very hard to just catch the edge of it rather than going over the top of it because it will run and it will seep. So I'm giving you a heads up. That will happen. It's okay if it seeps close to it because it will be covered by the frame but if it doesn't and it goes a bit further than that you're going to be a bit stuck. So I'm just blocking this in. I'm not going to be perfectly straight at the top. I'm just going to leave it a little bit more like it's been sketched in. And just keep going. So you've got all of the bottom done. 
But yeah, I mean, it rained and rained and rained the one day. We had thunder and lightning and everything. And I was watching it out of the work window thinking I've got to drive home this way. And I can either go the motorway or I can go sort of a country lane way. But if the motorway gets stuck, then you end up waiting for ages and ages because there's no no real junctions to come off um, to get back to mine. I live probably about an hour and 20 minutes, hour and a half away from work. So I thought to myself, I'll go the country lane way home because the motorway is going to be a bit flooded. It's going to be a bit dangerous. So I'll, I'll go that way. Not thinking that there is a Ford on my way home. Oh, disaster. <laughs> I drive a lowered mini convertible. Oh, my gosh. I thought I was going to sink. What's worse is I know I can probably get through them, but I panic. So instead of just doing the steady speed, I try to rush through. Oh, it's very scary. I should have gone the motorway and just waited in the traffic. So I'm just using the lighter Knight of Navy blend now and going around the rest of the wreath. I was, when I first started, going to do this all fun colours because when you watch things like Finding Nemo and everything or documentaries to make myself sound a little bit more cleverer than knowing what Under the Sea looks like from Finding Nemo, you do get all bright coloured wreath and anemones, but I thought I'm going to stick with green because my characters on the front are coloured quite quite a lot. So I can use my big brush and now just to get a bit more space coloured in quicker. Once I've got to about here where I know where I sort of want to be, I'm going to use the water sprinkles. So that's this bit here. In a few spaces. And I'm actually going to use the light um, balmy blue first of all just to go over those. Absolutely not neatly at all. Right messily. Please don't worry about it being neat because you're going to go over each colour about a hundred times so please don't worry about it being neat. Um, that's my night and navy pretty much done. I'm going to come in with the darker balmy blue and I'm going to colour all the way around these now. Again, I'm not doing it neat. The amount of times I went over this with my blends to get it to the colour I wanted to, I wish I hadn't have been so neat to start off with because I had took my time in doing it. That's roughly how it started looking at the start and then I use my light balmy blue to go over the whole card including the green bits like I said earlier over and over and over just to try and merge and blend all these colors in together so you can't see the brush strokes as much and then I'm just dragging the color up That's the best thing about blends Is that you can totally change the colour you've done just by using a lighter colour over the top. You could also use the bleeding colour, the white one. However, because I'm, I'm under the sea, I'm quite happy using this blue and getting everything done in a blue tint. Otherwise, I would have used my blender. But I'm happy with this. So I'm just going to drag the colours into each other. Okay, once I've done that over the bottom part I'm going to come back in with the darker balmy blue and I'm going to just come into the top part here over the top. I don't particularly want to go over the green with this one because it is just a bit too dark for that but I just want to go over the part of the Knight of Navy and then I'm just going to carry it up. I'm going to go over the light one there, around the light one here. 
again, like I said, really not going neat here. No, I, when I first started, I was like, it looks like a kid's scribbling picture. You just want to work so much at blending all these colours into each other that they're not going to matter at the end. And by the time you put the sprinkles over the top and everything else, oh, it's really not going to matter. So again, I'm just blending these colours back in down the bottom with a lighter farmer blue. This is just basically building up to the shade you want to. Just keep going straight over the top. I like when I'm trying to move the colour from one part to another, going round in circles. Feel that works better for me, up to you. The bottom bit here, I don't mind the big blend line, but here I really do, so I'm just going to work on that bit. And then I'm going to come down from the top. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I do really enjoy blending. It makes me happy. I normally prefer doing it in lines, just doing it like this, I do. Um, however, it makes me smiley happy to keep colouring away. And then when I see the colours change as well, just love that. Mm -hmm. So someone put up about the blends. I put a message up on Facebook asking which colours were the first colours that people thought they should get. And people have mixed and said, oh, you know, if you get one, one of red and one yellow, and I think you should go in colour families because I think you can actually get really good results then from colouring in the colour family. That's my personal recommendation. I would say that I'm just going with the darker balmy blue. Um, I would say that by staying in your colour family you can actually do sort of this sort of blending rather than just having a light and dark you can get all the different shades going I I prefer that so if you've got a big flower for instance to colour you can use all of the different pinks um, or all of the different greens on the leaves so I'd stick with colour families rather than actual you know, colours so instead of getting just a lovely lipstick and leaving it at that, you could get a lovely lipstick, you could get a rosier rose, you could bring it down and get the flirty flamingo, you know, you could get colours all in the one colour palette. I think that would be much better for you. So that's pretty much my background. All done there. I am just going to get my... No, I'm not. I am because I found it again. I'm just going to get my light mossy meadow and I'm just going to run through the veins of this again I'm really not being tidy um, and you'll notice that this side isn't blended as much as this side but it's because I know that I'm going to be putting my seahorse over the top so what's the point you know unless he falls off then it's going to look a bit messy but we'll be all right yeah so it, I, th I think the greens are handy because you've always got leaves and parts for flowers. Um, I also think a colour like either a lilac or the purples, oh sorry, lilac or the purple, the lilacs or the pinks kind of work pretty well as well. So that's the background of my card. All done and coloured in. So now I'm just going to grab some scrap with the white. And I'm going to grab my my little creature stamps and I'm going to stamp those all down using Memento again. And I'm going to blend those in as well. So this is like a 20 minute video of watching me colour with the blends. <laughs> you can quicken it up um, and shoot to the end because all I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to blend the seahorse in. For him I'm going to use the pumpkin pies the um, oh, pumpkin pies, the pineapple punch, that's those ones there, so saffron and the mango medley. So those are the colours I'm using for him. 
He's quite quick to do because he just uses a few colours really in certain bits. So all I'm going to do is go for every other scale with him until I get to here. And that's kind of going to be it for the orange with my seahorse. I'm going to use the lighter pumpkin pie. Just that. Again, like I said, Stampin' Up! have made it easy. They've given us double lines. So they know that we wanted to blend in and they know exactly where we should blend in for the shadows. Just a few more of the lighter ones down there. In with the Mango Medley with the darker one first. I'm just going to move that. I'm going to stick my arm in it else. I'm going to have a shell on my arm. And then the lighter manga medley. I'm going to go over the pumpkin pie with the mango medley so that it brings all of them into the same colour tone. This is what I mean. If you're going to get a colour family, you can actually do this and it changes the tone again of the actual piece. So that's why I would recommend doing that. Until I get to there. Then I'm going to come for the dark pineapple punch and I'm going to do his tummy in that. The lighter pineapple punch. Now this one I'm going to go over lines with. So I'm just going to bring that in like that. And then finally, so saffron. I'm going to do the double lines in the darker so saffron. And then I'm going to come in with a lighter so saffron, just straight over the top of that. And that's him pretty much done. See, it's so easy. It's nothing complicated like the background. Oh, I know what I did you. I used the lighter balmy blue just on his eyes there. Okay. For the shell, soft sea foam. That was all I used on that. Where all the lines were, I did it in the dark sea foam. I went over the whole lot with the light soft sea foam. See, all these lines that they do for drawing, it's just so much easier. I'm just going to move a few of these off my desk. I'm feeling like I'm getting a bit blended out. <laughs> I've used them all now. I'm actually going to re-stamp my shell because I didn't get a very clear stamp on that the first time. So I'm just going to re-stamp that one. There we go, that's better. It's a bit darker. And for this one I'm using the Rufio Rose. Rocio, sorry, that was mine. I still don't think I'm saying it right, but... I'm having fun with the Christmas catalogue at the moment. They've got a set in there at the moment and I have absolutely no idea how to say it. Like, not a clue. Um, I wanted to say it was Toil Tidings. But Toil's Halloween and not Christmas. And it's not spelt like Toil, but it's got an E on the end. So, I think I've heard people say it's like a twal. Twile? I haven't got a clue. So I keep pointing to it in the catalogue. Whenever I use it, I just point to where it says it because it's just embarrassing to try and say. So there we go, just over the top with that one. Now you could add some glitter to these. I didn't, but you could so easily add glitter. But because I was using the sequins in the background, I didn't. So I just fussy cut them out. I like fussy cutting as well. I have to be in the mood for fussy cutting. Um, I think if I've got a craft day, I'm very happy to sit and fussy cut. I find it relaxing. 
Or if I'm watching TV of an evening and I'm just sitting in my chair, I'm, again, I'm really happy just to sit and fussy cat. But if I'm in a rush and I just, I just want to make cards and do my blog, then fussy cutting then I get really frustrated with. So I have to be in the mood. But um, I don't mind doing it. And these are quite simple actually because they're just fluid line circles. He's a bit more trickier because he's got ins and outs. My uh, seahorse. I can't really think of a famous seahorse to give him a name. Mm, it begins with an S, so I might call him Sydney. No, 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 no I can't call him Sydney because I called Sloth Sid um, from the Ice Age Sid. So he can't be a Sydney. What else is an S? Stevie? Stevie the seahorse, maybe? I'm trying to think, was there a seahorse in Nemo? I think there was at the school. Was there little kid seahorses there? I can't remember. I'm not sure if they had a name. I think I'm going to just stick with Stevie. Then he can either be a girl seahorse, that's Stevie Nix, or he can be a man seahorse with Steve. Steve the sea. Yeah, there we are. He's got a name. It's Steve. E. But yeah, he goes in and out. So. I actually googled to see which colour I should colour him because I thought. I'm not actually sure what colour seahorses are. I know they're... I see sort of cartoons of them all brightly coloured. I wasn't quite sure what colour they were sort of in the sea. And apparently they do... Well, I say apparently. I found lots of pictures and they were all loads of different colours. But orange seemed to be the predominant colour. So I thought I won't embarrass myself too much by doing Stevie orange. Oh, I like it now. Stevie... That's a problem as well. I name my stamp sets, or I give the characters in them names, and then when the stamp sets go retired, I can't sell them because, you know, Stevie's in it. Can't get rid of Stevie. This is what I do. Like Bella, I've still got Bella. She went retired, but I can't get rid of Bella. And she's got a tortoise on it, and I've got a tortoise. My tortoise is Squirt. So I called the tortoise on Bella Squirtina, so they could be girlfriend and boyfriend. So now, can't get rid of that one either, you know? It's just... I need to stop naming them. Right, there we go. There's Stevie. The final stamp is the sentiment, which is that with gratitude one there. So I just need... It's going to get a scrap, but actually I remember I have these. Lots and lots of these, which is the edge of these when I cut them on the... Um, cutting machine at work I have a cutting machine at work and it'll cut the whole pack in one go it's amazing but it means I get loads left with loads of these strips so I might as well use that with gratitude oh no that wasn't straight that's why there is two sides to paper people my head might be in this and I'm sorry but I want to get it straight that time round much better yeah, that's straight. Or straighter. So for this, I'm just going to notch in. Notch up and notch down. And again, notch in. Notch up and notch down. Simple. And my frame, I remember, I put it underneath here so it would get flat and straight. There it is. I'm just going to grab a window sheet because I forgot that I would need those. Right, so here I used the tear and tape. However, tear and tape was too fat. Very sizest on the tear and tape there, but it was too fat. So 
it created a little bit of a pain but it was still a better stick for me I wanted it to definitely stick um, if you see it's just about a millimeter or two too wide so bear in mind if you're sticking it down not to push it too hard onto your background otherwise you're going to have problems where your frame sticks to your grid paper there we go just what you need on a day that you've done your nails tear and tape to stick them onto them there we go and that bit there I do enjoy to tear and tape because it's so quick to use so what I actually did was I stripped this off and instead of I was going to play with it and bend all of the tape backwards on itself but because it was just such a small amount to bend back I thought this is just going to be piddly I can't stand being fussy so instead I just got my window sheet and I just stuck it on my window sheet and stuck it down like that and then I just ran around it with my scissors and cut it really close to the frame I always put paper behind my window sheets so I can see where they are otherwise they just vanish I know that's the point of having a see-through acetate but I struggle to find them unless I have something that's listed you know window sheet them. And just cut straight down there. And then the final bit is just this edge here. Just check your scissors because you'll have that tear and tape around it and you don't want it to be gunky but that means it's not sticky on the back now and it's stuck on fully so I was quite happy with that I then got my adhesive strips so you can get these off stamping up um, so I didn't know they actually did these and I got them what did I do I, I didn't buy them I won them now how did I win them there was there must have been something and I won them on that and I was like, these are amazing. Because before I just used dimensionals or foam um, and glued things down that way. And then I got these and I was like, oh, these are pretty good. Yeah, stamping up, thinking ahead here. And so I purchased a couple of packs of them and they were gone so quick. You wouldn't think how many times you wanted a full strip to stick things up. But I actually found I did. You know, sometimes dimensionals are just too small and a whole whole panel just sinks and you don't want to use a whole load of foam so I'll go straight onto this and it, it actually isn't that pricey so and you get two two sheets of it so this was one sheet and you get another one of these um, in the pack I know, stamping up, looking after us again. Oh. Waste not, want not. Okay, so remove the back off it. It works the same as sticky strip with the back on. Top. Oh, throw the frame around. And then I've just got my sequins. These are the iridescent sequin assortment that's in the catalogue. I'm just going to throw a few. Now I find it easier to do it this way and put them onto the back. Put a few more on. 
um, rather than put them into here and then worry about flipping it over. Put it that way. I'm going to put my frame on that way around. Absolutely no reason. It just looked a little bit more messy in this corner than the top corner. And stick it over where you've blended it. And make sure it's stuck down. And there is your shaker. So then it's popping all your pieces together and putting them on. So I started out with a shell, so a little bit of tear and tape on the shell. Once I find the end of the tear and tape. snail and then in came Stevie oh Stevie <laughs> it's gonna amuse me all afternoon every every video you watch now I'm gonna be playing with Stevie And there's Stevie stuck. And then with gratitude, ah oh, ha ha, waste not, want not. Where's that little bit? There it is. Oh, I knew I'd stick it at the wrong end. <laughs> stick it where gratitude is so that it punches that bit up. There we go. There's the top part of my card. So I've to finish it off I've just got a sheet of Bermuda Bay so this is this was 9.5 centimeters this is 10 centimeters this was 13.75 this is 14.35 Stevie stick yourself down it's because I've stuck him purely onto the window sheet he's playing around so I'm just for some speed I'm just going to grab some fast fuse but you could use snail or tombow or the sticky strip whichever you wanted I'm just going to pop that onto there And then a tent fold card. This is a piece of A4 paper. Um, well, it's a thick cardstock. A4 thick cardstock. Cut in half. Folded in half. And Stevie and his friends are now getting added to it. And there we go. Shaker cards. With gratitude under the sea. Thanks for joining me today. Hope you've enjoyed. All of these items are available to buy over on my website, slimandstylish.com. If you do like it, do click down below and subscribe to me and I'll see you soon. Bye guys.